Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this another brand new day. It is 7.11 a.m. on Tuesday, the 26th of June. June, yes, indeed. And in my hand, I have Mama Squeak. Mama Squeak. Mama Squeak. Looks like a fish, but acts like a monkey. Mama Squeak. She is a good hamster. She was in her nest, so I woke her up and I actually was going, Mama Squeak, Mama Squeak, as I dug my fingers in her bedding, and then she just poked her little nose out and then came out and then crawled into my hand and I picked her up. She's not trained or anything. She was just curious. They crawl into my hand whenever I put my hand down there because, you know, she grew up from a baby is mine. I, I grew her. She's a homegrown. And I've shown her from the very moment that she was a baby, you know, when she was wandering around, that my my hands and my smell is safety and not to be scared of. So I'm going to put her away, back into her nest. There you go, Mama Squeak. She is a good little hamatron, and I love her a lot. I am very, very sad when she goes. Just like I'm sad when all my hamsters go. And speaking of that, now, I've been bringing Charvy out quite a bit. Now, I'm wearing, this is a real quick aside. It's a very chilly morning, and so I'm very susceptible to cold, so I'm wearing my flannel shirt. I got buttons missing, I gotta fix it, so. But anyway, Charvy, he's been running around and doing stuff, but his fur has been coming out, and I haven't seen anything that would really show why. You know, just more like age-related alopecia, hair loss. Only yesterday, yesterday night, I went and took a look, and along his bottom side of his, uh, it's, my shirt drives me crazy. It just does, it's not hanging correctly, so it's, it's driving me nuts. And look at this, now my collar is not correct, so it's, it's just going to drive me nuts the entire time that I'm going to be looking at this thing. Oh, please stop driving me crazy. Okay, let's go with that. Anyway, though along his side because up between his ears and on his back and then down along his side here it's been red like is it fungus does he have a fungus is it like ringworm i don't know i figured hey maybe that's fungus the red mark but it could also be irritation because he's itchy because when i took a look at charvy this morning he's got two big long scratches and by big and long i mean they're only about this long like half a centimeter a full centimeter closer to a half a centimeter and they're just because he's itching and he's scratching and his claw scratched his fur so is it fungus or is it skin irritation from him scratching i don't know i don't know i don't know how to treat it if it is a fungus I mean, if it is ringworm, and I, I don't know if it is, I mean, how do you identify, aside from hair loss? But how do you treat that? I don't know how you treat it in a hamster. So, and oddly enough, hamsters, and this is just an odd one, I just remember this. Hamsters love crickets, but hamsters are like people. If you get 10 hamsters and you have 10 crickets, and you give one cricket to each of the hamsters, eight of those hamsters are just gonna go ballistic and love it. And they're gonna go and I just chow. They're gonna grab the, hand, the cricket and they're gonna go nah, 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 and they're gonna start eating it head first. They love it. They are meat eaters. Hamsters are meat eaters. So they are omnivores. But they, they love crickets. But the other two, because hamsters are just like people in that, you know, they're mammals, they got brains, they're sentient as we are, just tiny, tiny, tiny little personalities and their tiny little brains. They'll turn up their noses. They won't want anything to do with it. If they do, they'll just like sniff it and then go, oh, and then leave it alone. I got a whole bunch of crickets for my hamsters at one time about six months ago, back when Bobo Jr. was still alive. Now, Bobo Jr. was a dust mop, and he had lost all of his fur, too. I mean, he lost 95% of his fur. He was naked. But then his fur grew back, and he grew back more than ever. He became a huge dust mop. He didn't like to eat crickets. He was one of those that didn't like crickets. But I didn't realize that until I had put two crickets in his cage with him. Now, he lived for a month, two months after that. So he he wasn't really on the cusp of death, but he was old. 
and then on the day he died, I opened up his cage and I took him out and I found one dead cricket. And he had a little cricket buddy his entire time that he lived out the with his cricket there because the other cricket was still alive. It was sharing his cage with him. And apparently he didn't mind because it was alive. The other one just died of whatever, you know, but apparently it figured out how to get water out of the uh, water bottle. So that was good. And I don't know what crickets eat. Do they eat seeds or nuts or stuff like that? Because there's wooden shavings and there's hamster food to eat inside of a hamster cage. And crickets don't eat, like, hamsters. So he must... He or she, whatever, who, who can gender a bug. But it must have been eating hamster food in there. And so when I took poor Bobo out, I also took out his little cricket buddy. Who knows if they ever hung out together. I mean, I can't imagine that they were like cuddling and all anything like that. It's just, it probably in his wanderings and it wanderings, it was probably crawling over him and he was like sniffing it multiple times and just that was fine so hey it was kind of cool and it never made any cricket noises i never heard it you know making cricket sounds you know like that creak 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 thing so and all my other hamsters just chowed on crickets and then i had a couple extras left over i just put those outside i wasn't gonna kill them or anything i mean I don't like even killing bugs. Even though bugs, I mean, they're small enough and tiny enough with tiny enough, tiny enough, tiny enough primitive brains, I don't know what they feel. What do they feel, if anything, or if they can feel because of their absolute primitiveness? Because they don't even know. Scientists have no ideas if insects can even feel pain because they have observed like a praying mantis eating a grasshopper from the bat from behind but the grasshopper the front half the part with the brain was fine it didn't seem to care it was doing its grasshopper stuff you know trying to do what it could on this end exhibiting zero pain as it was being eaten by the praying mantis so do they have pain receptors? I don't know. I know they don't have enough brain to really feel well anything at all so I mean bugs are primitive enough and I mentioned this one enough because it's it's bizarre. There is a wasp that loves roaches and what it has is a huge stinger. Long long stinger. And what it does when it finds a roach is it stabs that roach with the stinger and it shoves the stinger through its entire body up through the neck of the roach into its head, stabs into its brain. And then it wiggles its stinger around in the brain until it hits the right connections and then it can control the roach just like a puppet. The roach moves its body, does whatever it wants, crawls where it would like to go, except it's not where it wants to go. It's what the wasp is making it do with the stinger through its body and in its head. Does that kill the roach? No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, if you're a primitive, primitive enough that you can survive having being impaled up through your body into your head and into your brain and you can have a stick wiggle around in your brain until it just hits the right connections instead of destroying your brain that's pretty freaking primitive especially since a lot of bugs can live without a brain now you can't really just say that oh yeah they're so primitive that way there's mammals I mean they've cut the heads off chickens and the chicken's body has lived. There was this one chicken like a hundred years back, well documented, they cut its head off and it lived for, I don't know if it was years, but it was definitely months at the very least. It was a sideshow carnival sensation. 
So even mammals don't always need a brain to keep going. And there is one. <clears throat> now these creatures are not sentient, so it doesn't, it's different. But there is a type of sea creature, like a sea cucumber type, the critter type thing. What it does is it, when it is immature, it has a brain. And when it finds where it's going to latch onto and connect because it globs onto stuff, what happens is, is it goes into maturity and digests its own brain. And then as a mature animal, has no more brain. Just hopefully some kind of nervous system. But then, Good golly, Miss Molly. I mean, when you get rid of your own brain just to go forward, that kind of proves that it's not really a, a valuable thing for your species there, is it? Thumbs up for that. So it's just, it's a weird world, and we don't understand a lot of it just as to why. The things that freaks me out, I mean, I, not freaks, but just as a minor way, is the universe has so many things in it that are just... They kind of make sense when you when you take a look at why. I mean, surface tension has always been weird to me. Now I understand surface tension. In the molecules of water, liquids, fluids, one side of the molecule has a slightly smaller charge, one side has a slightly larger charge. So they're like clicked together like magnets. So you try to separate water and it's like separating magnets. They stick together even when they're not connected. So the surface tension holds together because it's like a whole bunch of magnets with magnetic force going clickety click and holding things down. That makes sense. I don't understand weird things in our unit. Well, no, I don't try to understand it. I marvel at the amazement of it. Like that there are forces that affect metals and also those metals seek each other out because of the forces magnetism is bizarre it is so weird and yet it's awesome it well i mean without it we'd be dead our universe wouldn't work without it it's it's there's like the uh, weak gravity the strong nuclear the weak nuclear and then i can't remember what the other force is but it's oh probably electromagnetic electromagnetism Anyway, I can't remember fully, but it's the fact that there's forces out there that does stuff like that, that we can't feel it, but they're out there. It's just bizarre, and it affects metals, so metals seek each other, and that is just so weird. There's another field and effect I'm trying to remember now. I almost had it, and then I was thinking, trying to remember while talking about magnetism, and then gone and forgotten, but it's in the... Ah, yes. The physical properties of stuff. I mean, I understand it's all just chemistry. The basic underlying foundation of our universe is chemistry. I mean, everything lands on chemistry. If there was no chemistry, we'd have no universe. That is one of the most primitive, basic building blocks and mechanisms of our universe. And so, yes, I understand it's all on the chemistry level. But it just seems so odd that there are minerals and such out there that you just apply a little bit of electricity to them and they glow. And they don't just glow, they glow in bright colors. That's why we've got the, all our LEDs that with just a little bit of electricity, they, they shine so bright. It's just metals and elements that you apply a little bit of electricity to them and they glow. And it's like, why? It's not heat. But then, yeah, understanding it's that basic chemistry foundation that's the underlying foundation of our physical universe. Man, you render our universe incapable of doing any any sort of chemistry, and that's it. Universe over. Thumbs up. Hey, you learn something new every day. And you do. I love learning things. Even if I learn the same thing like four or five days in a row, eventually it will sink into my midterm than long-term memory. I love trivia. I love just learning things for the sake of learning things. I love stretching my brain. Yeah, kind of squidges back into shape, but if I push it out enough, long enough, far enough, then it holds the shape. And that's knowledge. And that's a good thing. Oh, hoogie smokes.
I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people. It is a range because even though I count in American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand, I still get lost with my fibromyalgia, widower brain, post-acute withdrawal syndrome. I got depression, bipolar disorder, fibromyalgia, brain damage from my 25 plus years of alcoholism. Hi, I'm lucky I can even speak English anymore. So that's why the range. Now, I'm not reading the comments right now. It is just simply my going through and thanking you for having left a comment. So whether it's a good comment, a bad comment, and a different comment, the fact is you left me a comment. I'm going to go through afterward, read as many as I can, thumbs up each one I read, answer as many as I can. I love reading comments. I love answering comments. Thank you all so very, very much. It is greatly appreciated. If I mispronounce your username, no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker. Right now, we're good at marching towards the cliff of fascism, but not much more. So I do my best. Now, I'm opening up Chrome, or rather calling it up. And so we have Sebastian Myers. Thank you very, very much. Salamander Child. Heck of a name. Thank you. And then we have Earl Murray. Thank you very, very much. Grace. Greatly appreciated. Kathy Kitzkat. Always good to see you in the comments. Thank you. AC Hella High, <laughs> thank you very much. Dustin Alexander, thank you. And Tommy K, greatly appreciated. The founder of myself, that's a good thing to be. And thank you very much. Eric Reisdorfer, thank you very much. Biba Lazy Vlog, Vlogs, I sure hope I'm close, thank you very, very much. And Jurassic 375, thank you very, very much. John Timing, son of a gun. Ksaba Mahali, I sure hope I'm close, but I bet I'm not. Tall Dude 123, again, good to see you in the comments. Thank you very much. Yuval Grossman, good to see you. Thank you. Craven Blood, thank you very much. And Brian Glenn, good to see you in the comments. So my gun. Bob Ross, <laughs> thank you very much. Teresio Filo, thank you very, very much. And Anthony Ornelas, thank you very, very much. Ice Damon, greatly appreciated. And Maximilian, son of a gun, good to see you in the comments. And then we have Curb Stomp, spelled C-I-R-B, so who knows? And then we have Lord Board, Lord Board. How about that? Thumbs up and thank you very much. You all take care. Greatly appreciated. As stated, you get me out of this dark, kind of scary, cobwebby, definitely got eerie music playing, dark, scary head into the real world where there's actual sunlight and people and happiness and friendliness and light and it's good. Thank you very much. It is appreciated. I also have all sorts of, <coughs> excuse me, I'm slurring around my dentures again. I have all sorts of links down below. You can check those out. I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, Google+. Plus. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron, that would be very, very cool. Greatly appreciate. But if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I do take all good wishes. I do take all good wishes. There we go. I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. I do appreciate. No, I can't speak English all of a sudden. My sincere apologies. If you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. Definitely a thumbs up. And if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be cool. I would greatly appreciate that. I would understand if you don't want to. But if you are down with it, I will do my best to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of time. Yes, I talk with my hands. If I ever get handcuffed, if I ever get arrested and get handcuffed, I will lose my mind. I am mildly claustrophobic. And especially if they handcuff my hands behind my back, I am going to have such screaming anxiety. It is not going to be funny. So hopefully I will never be arrested. Anyway though, good to see you all. Thank you very, very much. Hopefully I'm going to have a reaction video today. Hopefully a game video. Hopefully a game video for my game channel. I have not gotten my prep for my colonoscopy on Thursday. If it doesn't show up today, I'm going to have to cancel because I will not be able to do my prep properly. So great. If it doesn't show up today, I'm screwed. And I hope got a, hopefully got a game video for this channel. Hopefully a game video for my game channel. If you could check that out, that'd be cool. I got a link down there if I can get it monetized. That'd be awesome. So you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that, my friend, is a very good thing. Thank you very much for coming with me on this daily journey of exploration. If I could not talk and vlog, I would be lost. It is appreciated. Thank you so very much.